Hello and welcome to the session in which we evaluate audit evidence against materiality. Now in the prior sessions, we discussed materiality for the financial statements as a whole and we learned how to set materiality for the financial statement as a whole. Then we established what we called performance materiality or tolerable misstatement by distributing the materiality for the financial statement as a whole, allocating it across various accounts or segments such as cash, account receivable, inventory, so on and so forth. So first we established materiality and let's assume we establish materiality for the whole financial statement at 100,000. Then we allocated this materiality to cash, 30,000, for receivable, 20,000 and for inventory, 50,000. So we took the materiality for the financial statement as a whole and we allocated, we distributed to the various segments. Now we will estimate the total misstatement for each of these segments. We, now we have to look for misstatements, errors, to evaluate, to make a decision about that segment, about that account. So auditor assess something called known and likely misstatements, which we need to, to know what they are, compare them to the materiality and determine if further investigation is required to ensure the financial statements are fairly stated. So after we determine materiality, we have to find out whether the account is fairly stated or not. And this is what we would learn in the session. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our audit course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their audit courses. We cover the essentials from audit reports, internal control, ethics, evidence, sampling, planning and materiality, assurance and non-assurance services, and of course, the accounting cycles. Our comprehensive course includes lectures, multiple choice, true false questions. Go ahead and start your free trial today. We are here to help. Your success starts here. The first thing we need to be familiar with is known misstatements and likely misstatements. These are the two type of misstatements that we need to be familiar with, known and likely. Starting with known misstatements, that's a pretty much self-explanatory. Why? Known. Known in what sense? It's known. We found it. When the auditor start to audit the financial statement, they will keep record or tally of all misstatements. Every error that they find, they, they will keep track of it. They, they will determine the exact amount of that error, which account is influencing, who created this error, so on and so forth. Those are called actual or factual errors. The auditor can identify clearly by looking at the actual transaction. So one type of misstatements that we keep track of are actual or factual or misstatements that we can point a finger to. This is what we this is what happened. For example, if a lease was capitalized instead of being expensed or vice versa, supposed to be expensed, but it's capitalized, this would be a known misstatement because the error can be pinpointed to a specific transaction, date, and sometimes even individual person. If we compute the depreciation in, improperly, that's a known misstatement. Now we're going to move from known, which is easy to, not easy to identify, we already identified, we can see, to something called likely. Likely misstatements can be divided into two categories. They can be divided into two further categories. The first categories, the first category is differences in judgment. What are those? What's judgment? These are discrepancies, differences between management's and auditor judgment on estimates related to account balances. Now, I hope we know that in accounting we make a lot of estimate. For example, we estimate warranties. We estimate allowance for doubtful account. We estimated, we estimate a re reserves account. We estimate losses. We do all these estimates based on a judgment. Now, if the management overestimate or underestimate these balances, the auditor might question their accuracy. So there could be a differences in judgment, how much we should book in terms of estimate for bad debt. That's an estimate. This is one type of misstatement, that likely misstatement, because the, the management making an estimate, we are evaluating this estimate. We could be wrong, they could be wrong. At the end of the day, it's an estimate. So there is a likely misstatement could occur because of 
the account is inherently uh, based on judgment. Now, the other type of misstatements that are likely are called projection of misstatement. These are based on the auditor's testing of sample transaction. Now, what is sampling? What is sample transaction? Well, when you're auditing, it doesn't matter what you're auditing. Let's assume inventory or accounts receivable. And you're looking at various items. Okay, let's assume this is each X is an inventory item or an account receivable balance. What you do is in auditing, we cannot audit everything. We cannot audit 100%. We select maybe five, five of the sample. We only select five and we make a projection based on what we found in these five items to the whole population. So what we did is we sampled and we made a decision. So what happened is this, we are projecting what's in these five accounts to the total population. Is this 100% correct? Absolutely not. Because it's a just, it's a projection. So in most accounts, auditor use sampling to make conclusion about the entire population. Now, keep in mind, we're going to talk about sampling much, much more in depth. We had like, we'll have 12, at least 12 lectures about sampling. Actually, we already have them. For example, if an auditor samples 20 items from a total of 100, they might find errors in those 20 items. Let's assume they find 5 out of 20, which is 25% error rate. They will take this 25% and they will assume the whole population is is it has an error rate of 25%. That may not be right. There's a sampling risk. We could be more or less. The risk is if we have more, right? But this is what we're doing is we are taking this percentage and we are projecting it. This is also a likely misstatement because we really don't know. Even if we found zero error, even if we find, let's assume we selected 20 items and we find zero, it means there's no errors. But remember, we only selected 20 out of 100. We would still basically say, um, we're going to assume 3% or 4% errors. Also, we did not find anything. Why? Because we sampled. Let's take a look at an example to see how this all fits together. Let's take a look at three accounts, cash, account receivable, and inventory. And the financial statement as a whole, the materiality level is 50,000, which is this one here. Now we're going to allocate this materiality to three accounts, cash, which is cash. The tolerable misstatement is 40K. Uh, I'm sorry, 4,000. We allocated 4,000 for cash. For receivable, the tolerable or performance is 20 thousand and obviously for inventory the remainder is 26,000 so this is AR and this is inventory so we took the materiality for the whole financial statement and we allocate it to various accounts what's going to happen next we're going to hit the ground running with our audit program we're going to start to audit cash account receivable and inventory starting with cash remember the performance materiality is 4,000 and what does that mean it means as long as we find errors less than 4,000, we are in good shape. In good shape means the account is fairly stated here. After auditing 100% of cash, and usually we audit all of cash, we don't sample cash, the, audit, the auditor finds $2,000 error. So the error is right here, 2,000. Is it below the tolerable misstatement? Yes, it is. Do we need to add any projection? And the answer is no. We don't add any sampling risk to this number because we audited 100%. Make a note of this. Since the entire balance was audited, no need to project anything. No need to project anything because we selected everything. We only project when we have a sample and we did not sample under those circumstances. So it's 2000 and it's below the tolerable misstatement. The next thing we did is we moved to accounts receivable. The tolerable misstatement here is 20,000. That's the level. The auditor finds actual misstatement of 12,000. So the actual misstatement was someplace here, which is less than the tolerable misstatement. But we don't stop. Why? Because we sampled account receivable. And the company decides to do what? Whatever misstatements we find, we want to add 50% as 
sampling risk well 50 percent of 12,000 is 6,000 therefore we add an additional 6,000 and we're up to 18,000 so although we found the 12 but we think there could be up to 18,000 why because this additional 6,000 is sampling risk now guess what 18,000 still less 20,000 so we brought the uh, the errors up to 18,000 which 12, 12 was actual and 6,000 is 50% of the actual. This is how they decided to uh, figure out the sampling risk, which is a total of 18 less than 20,000. Let's take a look at inventory. The tolerable misstatement for inventory is 26. We can tolerate up to 26. The auditor finds actual misstatement based on sampling 31,500. I'm gonna show you how based on sampling on the next slide. So based on sampling alone, guess what? We blew it. We found more errors than we're supposed to. We don't even stop there. We're going to project. So this is 31,500. Now we're going to project 50% of what we found, which is half of 31,500, which is 15,700. We're way above the tolerable misstatement. Since we exceed the tolerable misstatement of 26,000, what do we conclude? That the account is not fairly stated, the account is misstated. Now let's talk a little bit more about what would the auditor do and what does that mean? Again, even without the sampling risk, we were above. But we could have problem with the 31,500. Now how did we come up with the 31,500? We sampled. Suppose that total inventory balance was 450. So this is the whole 450. This is the balance. And we selected only 50,000 worth of inventory to audit. Of this 50,000, we found 3,500 worth of errors. So if we take 3,500 divided by 50,000, that's 7%. So based on this sample, we say 7% is the error rate. And what we do, we'll take the 7% and we project the 7% to the total population. So for if we take 7%, projected the whole population for 50 the misstatement is 31,500 now on top of that we said okay because we sampled we're going to add 50 percent of what we find just to make sure that's going to bring us up to 42 47,250 now what could happen under those circumstances are we just going to say okay the account is misstated not at all under those circumstances how do we evaluate the audit finding we have few options so we can we can compare obviously at this point we already looked at all the results cash was good receivable of is good inventory but inventory is way above the limit we need to do more work for inventory there's some problem with the inventory account so what can we do with the inventory account well one thing we can do is let's go back to the sampling we could say you know what we selected this sampling here but this group is not really representative of the total population. Maybe in the whole population, there are only 3,500 of errors and they happen to be in this sample that we selected and the rest is fairly stated. Well, what we do then, we say, I'm just saying, it's an extreme case, but what I'm trying to say is, sample, you could go wrong with sampling. So what we do is let's expand the testing, perhaps look at more items, look at more items, to reevaluate the sample that was drawn. So rather than this 50,000, we could choose another 50,000 sample, a diversified sample maybe, and find out if it's 7% or who knows, it could be 10%. Maybe that sample is either underrepresented or 3%. But let's do a little bit more, more work. What is likely happening is that the 7% might come down if the auditor select more inventory, or it could go up as well. But for now, all we can say is inventory is overstated. So that's one way when we're evaluating or what works need to be done. Another way to approach this is by adjusting the tolerable statement. So remember when we started, we allocated 26,000 to inventory, 4K to cash, and 20K to account receivable. Now, now let's assume we're, we're, we are auditing everything in order Let's assume we audited cash, and in order means we're starting with cash, then account receivable, then inventory, and we found zero errors in cash. 
what we say we say well cash you know we allocated 4000 we don't we did not need to let's take this 4000 and add it to the so we can tolerate more in inventory because this 4000 basically get freed up so you could adjust the tolerable mistake that I'm not saying this is what you do but this those are some of the options the same thing you can do with account receivable so in some scenarios if the auditor finds a segment like cash or receivable is in good shape, they can shift the focus and some of the materiality limits from those areas to inventory. So the auditor might decide to adjust the tol tolerable threshold, increasing the allowable misstatement for inventory. And this flexibility helps the auditor fine tune the review as they dive deeper. This is when they discover more risk or less risk for a certain account. So since the total misstatement exceeds the tolerable misstatement, the auditor needs to conduct further investigation. This could involve expanding the sample or gathering more evidence. Now keep in mind this is a simplified overview of how auditors evaluate evidence especially when you're using sampling and we'll talk about how we do it later on. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at MCQs that's going to help you reinforce, show you how to grasp this material using application whether you are studying for the CPA exam I have AI CPA questions or for your auditing course you want to really reinforce these concepts invest in yourself and good luck